Hey guys, so we're going to go over, um, we're going to open up your footwear underlay, how to do live paint for your footwear. This is actually from Spencer Nugent. I got to edit my artboard. Um, edit artboard and I can drag it. So this is what we'll print. And I have measurements up here. I can kind of see how big it is. Okay. All right, go to selection tool, selection tool, direct selection tool. Um, if you don't know how to use the pen tool, look at the earlier version. We're going to layer the uh, video, uh, go over the pen tool. Layer one um, is going to be underlay. We're going to label it under layers here. We're going to create a new layer. We're going to lock this guy. If this guy's not locked, then you can move it all over the place, which is really bad when you're tracing. <laughs> so we're going to lock that. Go to layer two. We're going to go to the pen tool. So we're going to be using live paint so we don't have to make closed forms. We just have to lay everything out. So I'm going to start out with um, just doing click dragging with the pen tool so I have good handles. I click on alt, bring it down. Here, I'm just going to kind of map this guy up. Oh, shoot. Um, again, Alt to free up this handle. Let me do this right now. I need this um, to be not not filled in just the line. Um, I can go in and adjust handles later, but I'm doing Alt to free up so it's because I'm click dragging. And I'll tighten things up as I go. I'm just going to map out this outer edge, Alt to free it up. Um, one second. Okay, so I'm just going to get this all mapped in. I'm just doing peaks and valleys again. Um, I'm not worrying right now about all of these little guys. I'm going to do like just above it. It's a little hard to see, but I can. I'm going to ignore all of the loops. I'm just going to get the basic shape in. And then, because with uh, the way live paint works, I can add that in after. I'm hitting Alt to free this guy up. Alt. And this is um, Spencer Nugent's design, if you're like, hey, I know what that is. So, see when I hover over here, there's a plus sign. Um, that would add another anchor point in this, but I really just want to close this. I want this line to end. So I'm going to click drag and then hit escape. And then I'm actually going to hit A uh, for direct selection tool for just this anchor point, And then I can move it over on top. I don't have to worry with live paint about closed paths. So I'm going to get this pretty close because it'll close it up for me later. And then I'm going to not start on this line. I'm doing this part. So I'm going to start actually above. Drag this guy down here. A, oops, uh, A, I'm going to get that guy to delete that. A, this anchor point, drag it down. So that's pretty much in this line. So now I've got this pretty much where I want it. I can come in now and clean this up how I need to. Adjust my anchor points as needed. Soften this guy a little bit. All right, so then I'm going to add in some of these basic lines. I'm hitting Alt, bring this guy back. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm going to have it end a little bit ahead. A, I hit Escape. A, bring it back and bring it here. Just getting this top line here, peaks and valleys. Is it for the anchor points? Escape A. Bring this guy up here. Pull it down. Lengthen that handle. So it smooths out a little bit. Pull this guy here. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to not have it start here. I'll just keep pulling them back after the fact. Let's say 
Right now this doesn't close up. I'm gonna close it up so it's easier for later. This let me go all the way up, that's good. Escape A. Here we go. Okay, it's letting me just start it. Um, I'm gonna do here, pull this out, and here, pull it out. Escape, and then Oh, it's because that path isn't selected. Then I can do it. Click, drag, escape, A. So make sure this looks like the proportions look good. Not any weird, funky stuff. So not a ton of handles. So what's cool is I can have overlap later. So I'm going to have this be material kind of like underneath it that comes up. I think it'll be cool. Escape. Escape. And then flip this. Escape. And then we're going to have a material come up behind here potentially. shape on the top. Um, okay. And I'm just going to do this one like this. And then I'm going to go in. Okay. It's going to be a little not perfect. The handles just were too long. And then I can go in and soften this up. But it adds two anchor points, so I'm always a little careful with that. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then let's add in for the tongue. I'll move that back afterwards. Escape. A nice. Okay. And then just realizing this can end here. Sometimes that gets funky doing that, so um, but it worked. And then I'm gonna go for um a rounded rectangle, because it'll be easier <laughs> for right here. So I did that, um, and then turn it there. Copy. Control V, Control C is copy, Control V is paste. And you can hand do these if you want. Oh, come on. Space bar to move. C, Control V. Control C, Control V. That's pretty good. Okay, so we're going to leave it at that. Well, no, we won't. No, we won't. So now we're going to do this. I'll show you one more trick. That up. Escape. Um, I'm gonna do Alt, and I'm scrolling. A. Pull this guy back. Tuck this down. And then I'm gonna select this guy. Object path. Offset path. Uh, point two, maybe. Nope. Object path. Offset path. I can delete, delete, delete. If I wanted, I mean, oops. I can delete these anchor points. 
and then it's like perfectly offset. It's one way to do it. Um, if you have like a whole bunch of lines that are parallel, another way to do it is escape a copy paste like that. The lines are a little bit, the length gets a little screwy, but it doesn't really matter. Escape A, or I could do V, V is probably better, V, and then Control C for copy, Control V for paste. Okay, and then these guys, what I'm going to do is this one. I'm going to do the whole line for the bottom. Escape. And then I'm going to do. I'm not worried about making close shapes. Escape. To get out of that path. Escape. Escape. And click dragging escape escape uh, escape escape ah. I just clicked it escape <clears throat> so now what I can do I'm going to do scissors, trim tool, hopefully this works. Oh, that's not going to work. We're going to leave this for now because that's where light paint's really nice. Um, so we're not going to worry about it. Let's say these were all spaced evenly and, and look good. I'm not going to get weird, don't get weird. But I could if I wanted to because it's all connected still. So it's nice to fix this now. So nothing is closed, shapes, all of that. Let me do this. I think this will be nice. Escape. Okay, so let's say this is like a clear piece of material over like two different knit. Like this was like a, a suede and then there was a knit that went all the way up here. Oh, but let's say this had like um, some material paste, oh, make sure you're in selection tool and direct selection tool, copy, paste. If you just copy and paste it, see how it's off a little bit? But I can do this object path, offset path. Let's do um, point two for this one, yeah. So it does have, it goes on past it, but I can click on those outer anchor points and then just delete. Oops. Delete double double click on that. Um, and then I'm gonna do the subtract sign to get rid of that anchor point. A smooth it a little bit. Ah. But and then you can add to this. Okay. And then I'm just going to do this because I think it will actually be easier. But I could offset that upper edge as well. Yeah, see, so it's like not as pretty as it could be. But you could have it be exact if you did the offset and then delete it. Anyway, so now I've got. That's ugly. See, too many anchor points. Subtract, take this guy out. A, use the handle. Okay, that's a little better. Good enough. All right, so we're not worrying about this. So this looks pretty good. Let's do, um, I'll show you one more trick. Object path, offset path. Um, let's do, Point one. Let's see what that looks like. I hit enter. Um, object path. <laughs> I'm only looking at that little tag. Offset path. Point oh 
two. Look over here. Five. Say okay. So now there's a whole bunch going on here. We just need this inside guy. So I'm going to delete. I'm on the direct selection tool, so I just selected the line on the inside here and delete. Oh, I got a little number. And then what I can do is select all of this and selecting everything else from that, delete. I clicked it twice. And then I'm going to select that because we don't need that offset. So, but, so now we've got a perfect offset. I'm sure there's an easier way someone on the internet is like, oh my god, but whatever. Okay, so just bring those down. Okay, so now I've got a tag, a loopy loop. You know what, that, I think that would be better if it all Like that. Okay. Maybe it would be on the inside stitch in. We're not going to worry about that. Okay, so we have this. Oh, we need an N. Um, new balance. We're going to take this guy, edit, copy image. Go back here, and then within this, we're gonna um, create a new layer. We're gonna have it be underneath this guy. Uh, paste, <laughs> it's huge. Um, and then we can just do selection tool, hold shift while I scale it down. And then we can kind of place, uh, hold shift so it doesn't get distorted where we want it. It's usually pretty big, but we'll say it's there. Let's make it a little bigger. So we can either have this be placed on top, like if it's sewn in on the top, we can have it be on another layer. Um, let's, um, we won't do that. Okay, we're going to leave it in this layer. Keep it. We're going to lock this guy, do this. Wait, hold on, let's see if I can, so let me do it before, and I was like, what, is it me? Oh, oh I got to select it. Duh. There we go, select the image, and then you can make it transparent. Lock it, go back to this layer, and then we're going to just use straight lines for this so we don't screw it up. Ignore all rounded edges. Cancel. Um, click, drag. Oh, wait, we're not going to do that. I lied. We're going to do the pen tool. Sorry. Um, not thinking straight. Pen tool just clicking. Keep your edges even. Oh, my God. All right, nope. I'm totally not going to have time to edit this and delete that. So, okay, we're just going to go for it. We're doing the inside one for the in. Try and get it looking good because it'll get really wonky looking. If it's, if it's wonky, it'll look extra wonky. I'm just realizing what I should do right now. I'm going to do this. Escape. Subtract for delete anchor points. There. That's what we need. So now plus for plus anchor points here and here. We're going to do one here. We're going to do one here because there's no handles. Everything is handleless. Okay, got it, got it. Here, escape A. Uh, I guess I could just hit A. So now we're just going to click or drag this guy down. Get it where it needs to go. I'm going to um, hold Alt and zoom in. There we go. Hold Alt and zoom out. Mm, I'm going to try and not screw around with that too much. Come on, A. There we go. So now I've got this. It doesn't have any. Let's do that. 
So what we're going to do, object, uh, path, offset path, and we're going to have it be 0 0.07. Just going to click on minor, nope, point, if we want this look, point, point 0.1, not hitting enter. Yeah, that's good. Okay. And then we're going to do, select this path, um, object. We're going to ignore this threading because we'll get that later. Okay, so now we've got, we're going to hide this. We're going to hide this. Keep that guy locked. We need to duplicate this and then lock it and hide it for later. Um, so that we have it in case things go wrong and so we can use it for other things. So I'm going to select this guy. So this is a closed path. It's its own closed path. These are all individual paths. Um, so closed paths mean I can make this solid like that. But we're going to leave it like this. I'm going to click on this. I'm holding Alt and then I'm dragging on top of the plus. Okay, so then we are going to lock this guy and hide it. And this is just going to be line art. Okay, and then this is going to be live paint. Okay, so we're going to select this. So everything is selected. We have two options for this, but we're going to do it this way. Live paint bucket, and then click to make live paint group. So this is now a live paint group. So if you open this up, it says live paint, because it's actually a live paint group. So what that does, so now go to live paint selection tool here, which is also shift L. So it breaks all this up. So it's like Pathfinder. So this is why um, we kept the other, because it might be better for the logo to do that. But so what we can do now is we can go through and I'm holding shift selecting these lines, delete, because these are all going to be the that one shape. So it like builds, it's like a pathfinder like shape builder, but it's really powerful. So let me do this, let me just do a super quick delete. All right, I'm going to clean this up. Uh, control plus sign, zoom in this time, delete. So this is underneath that. And then you can also just hide the edge if you want. So like these ones can go clear, but they're still there. It's still, so that way you could have like a gradient here, but I can delete these lines and then those aren't a shape anymore. They're just open. If I'm like, oh my gosh, that's really weird. I can go in A and I can, I can move this still down. And then Shift L is direct selection tool. It's its own tool. And then I can go in and clean these up if I want. I'm just deleting them, selecting them and deleting them. Okay, so it's pretty, pretty darn handy. So what's nice is that I can go through for some of these, like all of these, I can make them invisible. So they still break up the thing, but they're invisible. And I'll show you why that's handy in a minute. So let's do that for this guy too. I'm going to do that um, for all of these where it's crossing over. Let's make it invisible, I think. Maybe not that. Not that. But this guy is underneath. This is going to be on top of this. Yeah, so this will be invisible. Okay. And so what's cool is that these are already different color, so I can just do this. Triple click, everything that color is selected, and then I could just hide it. And it might be easier to not have that in. So what I can actually do, I'm going to control Z. I can open this up. And because these guys are their own paths, 
in this, in the live paint, I can select those and delete them. And now this is its own deal. So that's an option too. I'm gonna hide that. But so it's still here underneath, which is really handy. And I'll show you why in a minute. But for now, what we're gonna do is, so now we've got this. I'm gonna click all the lines and make them like a really light gray and then a really fine like 0.5 so you can barely see it because then I'm going to go and be like alright so this is my back fabric that's going to be like a blue let's say okay and then this is going to be let's say like a, a gray Cool. This is going to be, um, I have not thought about this ahead of time, <laughs> so don't judge me. Um, I probably should, but it's not terrible. Um, okay, and then this, there, okay. So what's nice now is that if I double click or triple click, everything that's that as color is selected. So this, I'm gonna make a dark gray. And then this, I can select all at the same time. Going for it. So once you get these color coded though, it makes life a lot easier. So let's make this eye for eyedropper right here. And then control L um, is the, or shift L, shift L for the light paint tool. Um, okay. Try and get like a darker <laughs> green. It's probably playing this better. Okay, so then what I can do is Anything that, if I triple click while I'm in the live paint selection tool, now I can be like, you know what? I really want that to be like a navy kind of color. Okay, let's just see what that looks like. All right, cool, Shift L. Let's select these, I'm holding Shift. Um, for the laces, let's do pink. This thing's gonna get wild. Um, I'm going to hold alt and scroll my wheel and then let's do pink, it's still there. And then I'm going to hold shift for these two. I'm going to make it so you can't see that outline. Do the same thing here. Okay. So I can make all the lines, let's do that. We can make them invisible if we want. And then it's just this. So I'm gonna show you another thing we can do that's really cool. So then I make um, a new layer up here, and this is gonna be called um, color, Ugh. colors. <laughs> um, I'm gonna make sure I'm on this layer, and then I'm gonna make a bunch of rectangles or squares, whatever. They're here. And then I'm gonna select one and I'm gonna have it be gradient. So gradients are over here. So if I double click on this, I can, R, let's do RGB. Um, I can select a color for here. Let's have the soul be like an orange, just cause this thing's already kind of crazy. RGB, uh, let's do yellow. It's gonna be, this is gonna be crazy. And then for this one now, if I wanted to, I could do this. I can move it opposite direction. I can change this color. I can change this color. Okay, 
let's go for that for now. So I'm going to do Shift L for Live Paint Tool. I'm going to do I for Eyedropper, and then uh, it automatically does it. If I do G for Gradient, so I'm going to. That's the only thing with this. So see, the gradient is applied here. So Shift L. Okay, G for gradient, still this one, and then if I click and drag, I can change. Why is it not letting me? Gradient. Why is it letting me? Doesn't let me change the scale. Normally you can change the angle. Okay, um, so I'm just going to show this. Um, it might be that my version is. So right now, they're all, I select all three and then eyedropper that gradient G. Man, okay. Um, copy, shift control V, G, and I can do all of them at the same time. I put them into a new layer. I shouldn't have to do that. Um, Shift L. Shift L. 